Initialize sequence. Yo, this Blade, your dad, homie. This is Jamie Matt Rock. This be the one them called Tech Nine. Yo, what up? This is Shaq's Two Dope from Insane Cloud Posse. This is the genius Chris Keller. Cook. What up? It's G Mo Ski. This is Rich White Jesus. It's the kid Mercury. This is Slain. Dragon Eyes Necro. Project Born. Mad Child. Your boy Jerry. Bitted. Welcome to the underground, Australia's home of rap, metal, and alternative music. What is up and welcome to the Underground. It is Ned joined by a very special guest, the one, the only, Jamie Madrox of Twisted, one half of the Demented Duo. Jamie, how are you, man? Great to see you in person. What's up, Ned? How you doing, man? Yeah, going really well, man. Excited to have you on a Zoom call. It's very cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, no, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you since, what was it, Astronomicon? Yeah, the first Last one, man. Time. It, it feels like it feels like it was forever ago. It was. It feels like several lifetimes ago. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> it Hell yeah! It certainly does. And I was very jet lagged on that one, Jamie. So yeah, I can imagine, you know, brother. Yeah, it was crazy. But man, I want to kick up, kick things off, and talk about the pandemic, man. M and E has absolutely stepped up during this time. But before we get on to that, you yourself, Jamie Madrox, how has the pandemic affected you? Hmm. Um. It's 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 made me it's made me look and appreciate things from a different perspective. It's it's like it's like they say the things that you take for granted until they're taking away taken away from you, and then you're like you know it's like it's like having cereal with no milk. You <laughs> suddenly appreciate milk. Milk was great. Remember when we used to have milk with our cereal? You know what I mean? It's like it's one of those things where it's like um, it's shown me that. It's also shown me. Um, it's shown me to to stay on your feet and 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 think fast, to to stay ahead of the curve because in the business that we're in, um, you're never promised the next day, and the fact that something like this, like this pandemic, that that can seriously derail anything from from a music industry to a car company to a restaurant, on back to whatever, you know what I mean? It's like it has that kind of power. So it's important to what I've learned is important to stay ahead of that and to, and to be a, a visionary thinker to try to stay in the lane and mash the gas to keep it going. And you guys have most definitely done that with M&E, man. It has been crazy. Been trying, man. I've said this to many people though, Jamie, and I've been down with you guys uh, since 1999. Uh, I do not remember a more exciting time in the underground, just the amount of things that you guys are pushing out from the new albums, the podcasts and whatever. It, it's, it's been okay. crazy. What's the highlight for you? Um, You know, just as far as during the pandemic, you mean? Mm. I, I think I think what what it's been is I think it's it the highlight for me has been the fact that that I'm I'm just super intrigued by by Paul and myself and and our ability to try to take the most shittiest scenario and to try to make it the best scenario or to try to make the absolute best of a shitty scenario I think is yeah. is is what I would take away from that and I'm I'm just I'm blessed that him and I have that avail that availability rather to uh to be able to continue to do stuff like that for not yeah, only well, for man. ourselves but for the listeners too you know Oh, definitely, man. 100%. But you had Netfest on my couch. That was amazing right there. You guys Absolutely. were pretty much you were pretty much the first lot of people that did something live like that, I thought, and everyone's followed suit since then in whatever music industry, you've, yeah, music genre, I should say. You've had the the podcast, Jamie. They're my favorite so far, man. You've, you know, our That's G-Dam awesome. pod. I love the International Ghoul podcast before that. But, man, the uh, Freak Show was podcast. Live, but I, that was too. How, yep, cool, yep. how cool is it, man? The Freak Show podcast, that is in the top 40 in America, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's cool because it's it's given us a chance to connect with people from another another avenue to be able to connect. You know what I mean? It's like we have our social medias, we have our Instagrams and our Facebooks and stuff like that. But but those podcasts and just the what with with our G Dam Pod and stuff like that, it's just it's it's like what we're doing right now. It's just it's just laid back. It's just people just conversating. And I like the idea that that listeners and watchers can just like listen along or while they're folding laundry or building a car or whatever the 
hell you do for a living, you can just listen along with us and, oh, I liked how you guys, I feel the same way about you on that topic or this topic or something. It's like, you're just covering ground and you're trying to do basically what I said, make the best of a shitty time and share stories and, and content with people that may push their day to get, you know, it's like, we're just, we're all trying to get through the day. Yeah, definitely, man. And you guys are just born entertainers. It brings me to the question, if you weren't doing music, what would you, what do you think you'd be doing, Jamie? Like for a profession? I don't know, man. Honestly, I don't know. I was for, for a while. Um, my grandfather used to work for Chrysler and he wanted me to, he, he said that if I could draw cars, he was going to try to get me a job on the design team. And I was like, Grandpa, I can't draw cars unless they want cars that look like demon heads with with like you know, <laughs> eyes and skull faces. It's not going to happen. So like, I don't know. I'd like I'd like I in a perfect world, I would like to think it would have something to do with art, if not music, then actually like pen or paint or drawing or something like that. I would like to think that. But I know reality would be like if I wasn't doing this, I'd probably just be working at like a factory job or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And I would be living it. I would be, I would be very unhappy. I would be very unhappy with, with what I'm doing because I'm, I'm happy with what I do. And it's, and it's important to, to be happy with what you do because I think it shows in the work you put out. Oh, most definitely, man. And, and you can see that. And that, that is awesome right there. But man, keep up the great work with those podcasts. Just fantastic. I really enjoyed the yes, 20, 20 years of Freak Show. That was awesome, man. You throw back to those days. Do you remember what you were doing the day Freak Show came out? I want to say we were doing Hollow Wicked. <laughs> I think I think if I'm not mistaken, the if if my memory serves me correctly, the original uh uh the night you could have gotten the record was it was in a box set, a Hollow Wicked box set, and you got Bizarre Bizarre and Freak Show, and they were all different versions of the record. And if you went and attended that special Hollow Wicked after the show, you li lined up outside by a truck and they were passing them out. And I remember that was, I wanna say the first initial wave of the physical products touching human hands. And then after that, it was in the stores. And then, you know, like, I don't know. I, I don't know what I was doing, but but I know I was thanking my lucky stars. I was just like so excited that that not only did we do it, but we did it again. And, and it was just like one of those things where this is what we're going to do forever and ever and ever and ever. Yeah, and that's what I was going on. Never wanted it to stop. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask, Jamie. Did you guys know that you're onto something with that album? Like, I know all the albums are very consistent. Most Tasteless was amazing, and I remember hearing... That's still my favorite to this day, because that's the first Twisted album that I heard. But I remember getting Bizarre Bizarre and Freak Show together. It was nowhere near Halloween back in the day. It would have been probably Christmas by the time we got it out here. But I'm like... Damn. I'm like... Fair enough. I'm like, man... This album is damn good. Did you guys know that you were onto something with it? Um, I want to say I, I want you know the cool answer is to be like yeah, but but <laughs> we knew <laughs> one, one thing. The, the one thing that I mean the real answer is that what we learned is is I want to say right around the time of Freak Show is what we started to learn was that what we like, people like or more importantly, mm. our listeners like. The people who gravitated to our music enjoyed what Paul and I liked. So at least what we were putting out, the music we would make, they put out. So it's like, when you, when you, when the, when that kind of action happens and you, and you get that kind of give and take, and it's like, they dig what I'm putting out. And I, I like that they like it. And so you got, there's a confidence level that builds there. And I think it, I think it's, it was that in that era where, where the confidence started to begin and it's not until like you get onto maybe like Green Book when we really start being like, okay, okay, this yeah. is this is gonna be with this. Yeah, the Green Book is him and me and family. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, you know what I mean? Definitely, man. So it's like it all it all has it it all had its its uh its its little domino effects down the line, so to speak. But um. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's 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 Freak Show will always be always be awesome because it's like the first time that was the first record that we got to do by ourselves. You know what I mean? Aside yeah. from as twisted, 
because because most tasteless was was a hodgepodge of, and then we went back in with the the reissue with with Violent J, and we sat down and he kind of co-produced and sat with Mike Clark, and we did the extra, you know, spin the bottles and rock the deads and all that stuff, and kind of brought that to fruition and put that out, and then it was like Freak Show came around, and it was time to step up and be a big boy, put on the big boy pants. You know, you can't <laughs> you can't hold my hand forever. You simply cannot hold my hand forever. So we let go and we did our own and just the look and, and the sound and just everything that exuded off the project just let us know that it was right. Yeah, yeah, man. I love that answer right there. And like fast forward on to 2014, you start your own record label. It was 2014, wasn't it? M-N-E. Uh, six years yeah. on now, Madrox. That's crazy right there, man. Uh, is this where you it sort is, of man. envisioned it? Uh, you know, I don't know, man. I, it's like, it's like, it's been, uh, it's been a nonstop, uh, a nonstop. It's, it's been awesome to be honest. It's, it's just like with everything going on, you gotta love what you do. And, uh, and we do love what we do. And I think, I think what it is, is it's like, um, seeing people's reactions to the products, hearing people's stories, hearing how a simple song or an album cover or, or something changed a person's life or, had such a dramatic effect on them. I mean, to me, that's just, it's amazing. That's, that's, Eddie. that's, that's fucking beautiful. <laughs> it's amazing. What? It is amazing. Yeah, definitely, man. I hear what you're saying, but that brings me to my next one. Welcome to the underground. You guys not only start your own record label, you start your own sub label this year in the pandemic, if you don't mind. That is an impressive feat right there. You got Oh the Horror on there. You've got Red on there. What's the future for Welcome to the Underground? Um, I think it when I when I think of Welcome to the Underground, I think of it as a way for Paul and I to kind of just like uh like like kind of like maybe pay it forward or more importantly like as we were coming up, we always wanted to to be. We wanted to be a band. We wanted to be next to the bands. We wanted to, you know, and and obviously a lot of people want that. And if you have the talent to be that, then it comes into a next level where you do have the talent, but maybe you don't have the money or you don't have the opportunity or you don't have the whatever. So like, I feel like Welcome to the Underground is like that stepping stone uh, label that gives people opportunities where, you know what I mean? Like the, the style or or the demeanor or the product may not be MNE. It might not be, what we consider m and &E, but it's okay for Welcome to the Underground because that is something that doesn't, it doesn't have all of the m and &E intangibles, so to speak. You know what I mean? Like, like there's a, there's a, there's a certain, uh, uh, kind of vibe that we have with m and &E that we carry throughout our products. And, and I think that it's cool to be able to, a, a little bit of diversity, a little bit, just, just to be able to, uh, to give people some other options, so to speak. Yeah, 100%, man. I love the Oh The Horror. It, 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 are you yourself into that sort of metalcore so, side of uh, music there, Jamie? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I love Oh The Horror. They're awesome, man. They're they're really cool dudes. And it's like to see, to see how like into the music process they are and to see how passionate about music that they are and like just how hands-on they are. There are a lot of attributes of Jamie and Paul in those guys. I, I, mind you, it's, it's, it's three of them, but, but their personalities and their hands-on, like, you know, I did the video and, and, and I wrote the chorus and we did this and this, you know, like they're so involved in everything they do. Um, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good because I'm like in some sort of a futuristic self. I'm looking back and being like, if if you guys were there to help, you know what I mean? It's like, hopefully these guys will get big someday and they'll do the same and they'll open up a label and they'll grab a whole bunch of wannabe bands that want to get up to that next level and want to be somewhere and want to want to have that next fucking step in life. And they'll be that proverbial step for them and raise them up to that next level and kind of pay it back, man try to help out the yeah. next generation on the come up. That is awesome right there. And I don't know, Jamie, this might sound weird, but I want to sort of jump into your head a little bit. I put this all back to the van, no the, the Vans Warp Tour, man. I think there was a, you guys hit that Vans Warp Tour. You were sort of opened up to a whole new world maybe. And that's, is that yeah. where you discover, discovered a lot of the metal core acts and that sort of thing? 
Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, it's like we've always had we've always had a love for 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 like the rock and, and, and metal stuff. And like if you go back in the catalog, you know, obviously Freak Show is where it starts. And then we go somewhere in Mutant and then we go again and like Heartbroken and Homicidal. And it's always had its it's always been prevalent throughout. But um, being on the Warp Tour kind of like basically let everyone let us know that like a lot of the perceptions and a lot of the ideas and concepts that we had about our group and how the outside world felt about us were all fallacies. They were just mm. absolutely not real. Like, like people do not hate everybody that are juggalos. People do not hate everybody that's in this culture and shit. It's just, it's not real. Like we went and we turned a bunch of warp tour people into juggalos and everybody was like, whoop, whoop. <laughs> and it was just like, it was the coolest thing. And it was a good feeling to know that we could bring our culture over to a new group of people and have that and have that meld in and have people accept us and and not have it be this this ugly stain or stigma like it's like it's always projected as. Yeah. See, we miss out on a lot of that projection over here. Like, I've never copped any of that for listening to Twisted, and I've been listening to you guys since like 1999. Right. It doesn't exist here. Like, which is which is cool, but there's not as many sort of jugglers getting around because we're you know the other side of the world. But that just doesn't exist here, which is really cool. And that's kind of a crossover right. between my two favorite sorts of music: is your sort of your juggalo music, and then also your sort of your Ice Nine Kills, your Amuas, your your heavy bands like that. So Hell yeah! It has me extremely excited man for the this new rock album that's coming out i am so hyped for rose petal that is amazing and i think perfect oh, problem man. may be the best song that i have heard in a good minute man can you tell us about this this album it is it's coming out next year right uh the rock album yeah there's there's yeah. there's a there's a few things coming out, Ned. I don't know what I'm allowed to tell, but 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 I, yeah, but I got I want you to know that 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 there 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 is more music coming out this year. There is more music on the way. That yeah, there's yeah. <laughs> yes. There there is a rap record that is coming our way first, and then there Whoa. is a rock record. So we have been taking advantage of this whole time. And rather than sit on our hands and do nothing or just try to I don't know what we got our asses in the <laughs> studio and we started thinking because like because because it's like how we like to be is that we like to feel I don't want to be presumptuous, but we like to feel like how you feel. I think you feel how I feel. So where you get home and you're like, man, I need something to listen to. I'm going to work out. I want to put on my favorite show. Oh, there's new. There's no new content. I need new content. Well, it's a goddamn <laughs> pandemic. I can't go outside. Where the fuck do I get new content? We got you. Cause we're thinking like that. So we're trying to stay ahead of the game. So what we've been doing is we've just been recording stacks and stacks and stacks of content. And I put together several records. One of them was songs of Sam Hain. That was the, the Halloween uh, that, that came out. And then now there's, there's more goodness coming. And it's like, just to show, I want to say again, the diversity, because like, like if, if you look at it, like, like songs of Sam Hain was, was very, um, like a throwback to our core, horror core esque at very yeah. rooted. And 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 obviously the rap record will be more. I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. The rap record will be the rap <laughs> record. And the rock record will be the goddamn rock record. That I'm just saying. All, all I'm saying is that I am proud to say that we continue to keep putting out good music. And and I'm really proud because it's like we have not stopped since. Fuck, I don't even know when. Maybe since 2014 when you said that. I don't know. We just, we haven't stopped. And I, and I tell that to Paul and I say that to George a lot. And I'm like, you know, when you stop to look back and reflect on something, you're like, God damn, so much time has passed. But when you're just in go mode and you never look back, memories are happening. And that was iconic <laughs> for someone, for someone. That was iconic. That was amazing. That was like, you're just like, and you're still 900 <laughs> miles an hour. And well, they're catching up on the old shit, you're making the new. Like they're eating yesterday's pancakes and you're just grilling new ones. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, that's the idea. And to try, it's like the old school Doritos thing. Like eat all you like, we'll make more. You know what I mean? It's like, that is <laughs> yeah. the mentality. And if this is what you do for a living, and it is, <laughs> keep doing. Oh yes, I like that, right? You've got me hyped. You know hyped. what I mean? You got me hyped because you, that's- I want you to be hyped. I want you to yeah. be hyped because that's why, that's why we do this. 
Because it's like, we want to be the motivation for everybody. We have things that motivate us and things that put a smile on our face and things that get us through our days or get us through the, the troubled times with fucking when life happens. Because God knows life happens and it's been happening an awful lot in 2020. But when it does oh, yeah. happen, you need those pick-me-ups. You need those songs that, that are like comfort food for the soul and for the mind and that put you in a right frame of mind to help you be a better person. And um, anytime we can be any of that for you, it's an honor and we will continue to do that. Oh, that is awesome right there, man. And I like it. You mentioned George in there too. And I'm constantly bothering this guy. I love your song, Hungry Like the Wolf, man. That was an amazing cover right there. I want to hear you, Jamie, on a track with Chino from the Deftones. Who is someone that you would love to collaborate with most? Um, hmm. No man, there's 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 a bunch of people like like um like nothing but thieves, bad wolves. Um, yep. Yeah, man. Shit. Twelve foot ninja. Nine. Uh, what's yeah. that? Oh, absolutely. I said twelve yeah, foot ninja. Oh, uh, come on. You know, I, I was talking with twelve foot ninja for a while, and something happened. Uh, one of the members uh, had a child, and then they kind of like took a hiatus for a minute, and then they kind of fell. I, I don't know what happened, but but like we. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to say this. We have songs recorded. Ooh, there is a, there is, there is a, a <laughs> there's a Stevic Jamie Madrox collabo floating out there in the universe right now that uh, I don't know if we're allowed to release or what the hell's going on with it, but it is amazing. Uh, Stevic's the man. He's a, he's a total cool dude. Uh, 12 Foot Ninja, if you don't know, Google them. They're amazing. Get them in your playlist. Um, but yeah, man, it's honestly, to be honest with you, I, I, I've said this before, life is too short. I am down to work with any and everyone who wants to work with us. I oh, think that's that the greatest amazing. opportunity for any person who calls herself a musician or an entertainer to do, is to work with other people and create as much content to add to your legacy in your time on this ball of dirt. Oh, yes, sir. I love that right there, man. And I see that House of Crazies jersey you got on there, man. I'd be, yeah! I'd be in trouble if I didn't ask. There was a new song or two new songs on the Sam Hain album. Will we, are you guys ever, I guess, going to put out a full length? Um, hmm. There, there have been talks. It's just that it's like, it's one of the things where it doesn't, it doesn't fall to the beginning of like all of the lists of things. Like, cause they're, you know, we always talk about our twisted iCloud and all the and all the uh, ideas that yeah. float around within, and um, and inside of that there are so many things that are in front of that. So it's like when it comes around, I uh, I try to do my very best to weasel it in. I'm like, oh, uh, we can put a House Grace song in there. Let's let's uh, put a House Grace song in there. And they're like, oh, okay that's different. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's one of those things that I like to use as like a, uh, it's just to like keep everybody on their toes. They might, they might have been the originals, but they're never gone. Yeah. Nice, man. And you know, you, you can't give away too much. Like you were saying before, we've got a rap album. We've got a new metal album coming out. I'm very excited. Oh my God, dude, we're trying. Man. Yeah, bro. Yeah, sir. Oh, that's great, man. I'm listening. Yeah, no, you're good, man. I want to change things up to some fun stuff right now. You're a massive fan of toys. Uh, Pops and vintage yes, is what you're on on the Instagram. What is your most prized possession, Jamie? Um, I was asked this by someone recently, and uh, and and I said I said an answer, and I'm 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 kind of torn between that. I want to say. One, one of the, one of my most prized possessions is a, it's, it's called Lily Letty. It's a Mego Batman, but it was distributed in Mexico under the toy company, Lily Letty. So they used like this blow mold, kind of a cheap knockoff. It's, it's basically, it's, it's, it's basically a licensed bootleg for lack of better terms, which means that the possibility of getting it here in the States was slim to none. The possibility of it withstanding several decades of wear and tear and having it be still good. Yeah, man. So it's like, that's that's probably one of my, that's probably one of my prized possessions. Is I have one of those still, still nice and mint in the box. And uh, I got that 
a while back. And it just had it just, it's just one of the things I've always wanted. And I, I had an opportunity to buy one, like maybe like 10 years back. And I did. Oh, that is awesome. How about, awesome. <laughs> I'll show you mine. Check What's this. that? I've got this. Damn. Okay, is that Dean that? or Sam? That's Dean, man. You gave this to me. And I couldn't see, it was the glare on it. Yeah, hell yeah. No, Supernatural's my shit, man. Um, yeah. I got I got, I got, got really in head over heels with the pops and then I got out and then I got back in again and I just been, I've been, it's like keeping up with Paul. Paul is just crazy with the pops, dude. <laughs> he's got everything. It's like, and I love that because it's like, he's still got that, that, uh, there's like a childlike quality about him when he gets excited about stuff like that. We used to share that in trading cards. So it's awesome to see him have that same vibe when he collects something or when he's passionate about it or when we'll be on tour and he'll be like, I got to hit up Pop Topic so I can check out the pops. And I just start smiling. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're addicted. Yes. This is yeah, cool. that's good. That's good I love it right there. Big kids, man. I do too, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, no, yes, sir. It's awesome. That's how you roll, man. All right. Well, you've been kind enough to give me a lot of your time so we'll, we'll wrap this thing up very shortly man but before we go i need to know your most sought after possession mm. my most sought after possession hmm. i don't know i don't know what that would be uh we're talking about for a collectible yes okay for a collectible hmm Currently, I am looking for, currently, I am looking for a 1980s Hasbro Zartan in the box with the swamp skier thing. I just bought one from Kokomo Toys a couple days ago, and the the actual Zartan himself is not sealed. So I'm looking for oh. the, the Zartan in the sealed bubble. I just, I'm back on my G.I. Joe kick. If you, if you look right now, I'm going to show you. I got that TV playing G.I. Joe right there. Oh, yeah. See it? Yeah, definitely. That's G.I. Joe awesome. playing on the TV. You can't really tell because it's just a bunch of aerial shit. But it's in my office. I'm watching G.I. Joe right now. I'm just a big kid. It's it's 24-7 with me. But, but yeah, I'm just I'm back on my G.I. Joe kick. Uh, I've been trying to finish off some Super Power Friends for a while. That was a set that I was working on. And it's just kind of, it kind of comes and goes. I'm starting to notice as we get older, uh, a lot of the toys are drying up. A lot of people are starting to be uh, uh, hold fast to them and, and not be so you know secondary market with them. So when things do come up on the auction block, so to speak, the prices are really really high up and way more so than they've ever been before, which is really crazy in a pandemic how things could be so pricey. But yeah. um, nevertheless, I've never seen it's like an all time high uh, record breaker for like comic books and, and trading cards for some of the prices that have been clocking out at auctions. So people are out there and they are buying shit like crazy. Well, there you go. I guess, you know, I suppose because there's nothing much else to do, so. I mean, I guess so. It's like at the end of the day, you know, if you've been sitting on stuff for a long time and you got to pay your bills and you can't go out and work because it's a pandemic, you're going to start selling your collection and then yeah. people start, that, and, and that's when people start, you know, coming out of the purse strings and pulling out that good stuff that they've been sitting on forever. And, and that's when stuff becomes available to the public. So. If um, if you are like me and you're out there looking, keep a watchful eye because it's getting close to Christmas and people are gonna start putting up good shit. Oh, Come on hell it. yeah! What uh, are you looking Jamie. for, Ned? I want to know what your what's your what's your fucking most sought after. My most sought after, man. Oh, you got me right there. I can. I don't even know, man. Are I, you still, I, you're I still doing no, the pops, though, you. right? I can see yeah, all the I'm, pops in the background, so you're still doing the pops. I'm doing the pops. Here's my most sought after is those Halloween or the Hella Wicked, uh, Hella Freaked, the Fright Fest variants of those twisted figures. There was only 100 made. I Boom. know what you're talking about. Okay. Those are what you're looking Look, for? Yeah. That'd be awesome. I'm going to look and see if I'm, I'm going to look and see if I have an extra set and if I do I'm going to throw them to you oh, for Christmas. Man. Ah, uh, you are the best, Jamie. That is awesome right Hey man, there. you're the best, Ned. <laughs> Thank no you, worries, sir. bro. A, recommend, a recommendation from you, Madrox. It can be music, movie, something cool that you've checked out recently. Hmm. Well, it's it's November, so I was going to suggest uh, every time it turns November, I always watch Black Christmas. I want to say yeah. it's the 2006 version. I don't like the, the re-reboot one, but it's the sorority girl house, and there's, there's Billy, and he's the yellow-skinned guy, and he's killing everybody, and it's... It's fucking, there's something about it. I don't know what it is about the movie. I think it's the Christmas music and the horror and everything all at the same time. But every time 
I put that on and officially Christmas has started at that point and then it just starts spilling towards we get towards Christmas. So that would be my recommendation. If you are on this face of this planet and you have never seen Black Christmas, Google it, watch it, check it out, and then let me and Ned know what you think. <laughs> I love that. Because right we want to know, man. God damn it. We want to try to tell you guys about shit you don't know. There's nothing better than Christmas horror movies. Hey, they, they're just sort of funny. Damn it. Like, I think, I think some of them Krampus ones fell short for me. Like, I tried to get into mm. some of them. Some of them were like, nah. But but this one, just, it's, just, it's just a simple, it's a simple horror movie. It just happens to happen well Christmas. It's kind of like Die Hard. There's a Christmas tree in the movie Die Hard, so everybody calls it a Christmas movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, whatever. My buddy, my buddy swears that's his favorite Christmas movie. I'm like, mm. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, like I won't, I won't argue with you. It could be worse, you know. You could have picked a worse selection. <laughs> All right, man. Hell yeah. Last question, Jamie. Where, where would you, Got where can you see M and E in five years' time, man? Twisted and M and E. Um, hmm. Twisted and M and E in five years. I would like to say, I would like to say, uh, doing what we're doing now but on a bigger scale and more efficiently uh, expanding yeah. out some of our, we're, we're, we're opening like new, I'm gonna call them branches or divisions, but we're, we're working on several side things that are gonna try to better the company and, and, and bring in more talent and stuff like that and try to make things more feasible on our end to, to be able to put out quicker, better product. Um, and I hope to be there. I, 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 shit, I'm hoping three years. You're saying five. I'm hoping by five years, <laughs> we've already got two years of practice in by that point. Shit. Oh, yeah. I like that, man. Well, thank you so much for taking yes, so sir. much time out, man. It's always an absolute blast. No chatting worries, with you. Man. Be sure to hit this man up, pops underscore and underscore vintage on Instagram. Jamie, thank you. Thank you, Ned. Appreciate you, man. Love to Australia. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. This has been another presentation from the Grey Wolf Entertainment Network, greywolfentertainment.net.